Hi everybody, JG Pastor Jack here for Grassroots Motorsports Magazine. Standing over a wet Corvette with wet hair and wet clothes because we just pushed this Corvette into the shop. This is our 2004 C5 Z06 project car. Why'd you push it into the shop? Why didn't you just drive it into the shop? You're asking me, look down and you'll get your answer. There is no engine in this Corvette. We have removed the engine of our 2004 Z06 Corvette because we are in the process of installing a crate engine. It's sitting right over there behind our cameraman. So today we are going to do the unboxing of our 530 horsepower LS3 crate engine and take a look at what it's going to take. Do a little bit of pre-game planning on putting that LS3 into this C5 Corvette. So our crate motor is from Summit. More specifically, it's from a company called Blueprint Engines that Summit uh, sells a lot of their engines. It's an all aluminum 530 horse LS3. We're actually driving by the Summit in, um, in Atlanta, Georgia just the other day. So we stopped and we talked to the manager of the store about crate engines, about why they're so popular, about how do you make the decision between maybe I build the engine I have or do I put a crate engine in, in the car? So while you are listening to our conversation there, we are going to take the engine out of the box. When we come back, we're gonna do a little bit of an unboxing of that engine and talk to our mechanic friend, Jesse, about just what it's gonna to take to prep this engine bay for the new motor. All right, so I'm Steve Kester. I'm the uh, senior manager of retail with Summit Racing. And today I've got in front of me, I've got a uh, Chevrolet Performance LS3 525 horse. Uh, this is a beast of an engine right here. It is a pump gas, uh, street friendly, a lot of horsepower, good torque, uh, and just a just a really all out good performance motor. And so this looks very familiar to us because we have we have uh, the the Blueprint Engines uh, version of this back back home in right. Daytona. We're waiting to go into our 2004 uh, Chevy Z06 Corvette project car. So when we were thinking about getting more speed mm -hmm. out of our car right. we did the math between building our existing motor and putting a crate motor in it H how do you help a customer make that decision whether or not to you know, we're we're in a candy store sure. here with lots of engine parts oh, yeah how do you help somebody make that decision you know that's a real common question and uh, you know i think for us what we do here at summit racing is we talk to the customer and find out what their end game is you know number one are they trying to keep the car uh, pure if it's a numbers matching motor and so forth and uh, you know that kind of leads the customer down which way to go you know, blueprint uh, offers a lot of variety so does chevrolet performance and we have as we have several uh, different manufacturers uh, new and uh, remanufactured engines available for our customers. And you, I, you even heard you say the word warranty when we were speaking earlier. Plus. Absolutely. So when you go out and buy a Blueprint, just think of this, when you're buying a, let's say an LS3 from Blueprint, makes 530 horse and it's got a 36 month warranty. I mean, who does that, right? So, uh, so yeah, it really works really well. And then when you buy a Chevrolet crate performance motor, you know, for those motors like this one here, this LS3, you know, if you have a problem with it, you take it just back to the Chevrolet dealership, just like you would any other uh, Chevrolet vehicle. So, yeah, absolutely. So, how many different crate motors do you do you think you guys have? Do you, do you have an exact number? Do you even have a have a rough number? Yeah, in, yeah. In, now, in, there's in your head? Let, let me tell you, there's stacks of them back in our warehouse, <laughs> and uh, you know, every day there's there's a crate engine or two going out of our retail stores. You know, no telling how many we ship. Uh, but you know, one thing about dealing with Summit Racing Equipment, we've got the staff to answer those questions and in uh, the inventory in stock to service our customers. So we, so we work hard at that. So how many this is our friend Jesse Spiker from uh, VMP Performance. He's gonna be helping us with the install. So you are no stranger to crate motor installs, although most of them uh, have a little bit different badge on them usually. A couple more camshafts, uh, you know, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, they, they do a lot of Ford stuff at uh, v mm -hmm. VMP. Actually, have done some dyno tuning on, on this car, so no stranger yeah. to the LS world. So, as, as a mechanic, as, as somebody that does this professionally, uh, the, words, the words plug and play, mm -hmm. do, do those words ever mean what, what the, the, we want them to mean? In the aftermarket world? <laughs> I'm going to say with 98% no. Um, there's always usually it's plug and play except you have to modify this well that takes the plug and play away, away from it um, these 
these sump tanks that we we're gonna put in this. Yeah, so uh, we may as well let the cat out, out of the bag now. Oh yeah, we my are. Bad. Yeah, no, it's, it's fine. You're, you're excited. That's so excited. we we are going to be uh, dry sumping this LS3. One of the the issues with uh, with with LS motors, kind of across the board, is oiling trouble. Oiling tends oil tends to pool in the passenger side heads. Uh, so to get a little bit more reliability, to basically take the the oiling concerns out of the equation, we're going to dry sump this engine, which uh, involves putting on a different pan, putting on a, a pump that scavenges the oil out of a much shallower pan, pumps it back to a separate tank and uses that tank to both feed and, and pressurize the engine oil. But you have to put that tank somewhere. So yes. as part of our pregame, we're, we're kind of looking at this this hole. I mean, we're, we're LS swapping a car that already came with an LS. So we have certain advantages going in, knowing that it will physically bolt right in. But we have other stuff to worry about. So how do we... How do we start to approach the additional stuff we're going to be doing to this car? So with this build, um, we're doing a couple things while we're in here. We're getting rid of the AC because race cars don't need cold air. <laughs> we do live in Florida though, so bad move, JG. <laughs> yeah, I'm, but I'm, I'm already so, I, so I'm doing I'm I'm purposely using the dry sump system that replaces the AC compressor to just take that out of the equation. Because at some point we, we need to make the decision, do we want to go fast in this car or do we want to pretend that we're still going to drive it on the street occasionally and I'm, I'm done pretending. I want to go fast. Yeah. So we're going to remove the rest of the AC components. We got some lines, the receiver dryer, um, all that's going to come out of the way. With this tank, we're still able to mount our fuse box in the same spot. Um, we got a couple of things we have to do in the hole though this bracket down here where the battery actually mounts that has to go away once that goes away we need to put our batteries somewhere um, we're going to be mounting that in the back of the car um, the pcm has to be relocated um, what's all involved in that we're not quite too sure yet until we have the tank here um, we're thinking about putting it inside the car keep it out of the weather but we might just be able to reposition it a couple inches and get it to clear. Um, but there's a little bit of fab work involved, a little bit of wiring work involved, and then you actually have to get the tank itself mounted in there. Um, again, and we're get, going with yeah. a 10 quart tank, so it's a pretty sizable tank. Um, just have to make sure it's solid. Yeah, we also have some other issues. We have a very leaky uh, power steering rack down there. So we're going to be sending that out to get to get rebuilt, and you find a lot of opportunities when you have an engine out of the car. But what I really want to see is I, I, this is supposed to be an unboxing video. We haven't unboxed anything yet, so let's um, let's get this LS3 out of the crate or at least exposed in in the crate. And mm -hmm. finally, this thing's been sitting in my garage for three weeks, and I haven't torn it open like a kid on Christmas morning. It's time to get this thing out of the box and look over exactly what we got from Summit. So this is a 6.2 liter, 376 uh, cubic inch LS3, 530 horsepower, uh, all, all aluminum. If you want a comparable motor, um, uh, fifth gen Camaro SS, the, 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 the later version of those cars, ran a very, very similar engine. Uh, basically they, they ran this engine with a little bit less cam. So. From delivered, like complete down to coil packs, entire wiring harness, injectors, uh, throttle body, delivered. So let me quote you an actual price here from Summit, $6,899. Um, if you're thinking this seems very much like the GM Performance LS376 525 engine, Spec wise, it's very similar. The cam is a little bit different. Let me get you um, actual cam specs on this. 
612 intake, 585 exhaust lift on the cam, 225 degrees of intake, 238 degrees of exhaust duration at 50 thousandths, and um, 113 degree lobe separation. So a slightly more aggressive cam than the uh, GM LS3376 525. And talking to folks that have dealt with the, uh, the, the Blueprint, Blueprint Engines company, great folks to deal with, uh, great in honoring their warranties, um, but the engines are put together well and don't need a ton of back-end service. So we're excited. So uh, Jesse, come on come on over when you're done with your, your, your text there. Jesse's ordering an Uber. He's trying to get out of here already. Um, it's not a coyote. Right. So... It, it's it's not the, the thing that always shocks me when I see an, an LS motor out of a car is how physically small they are. I mean, this this dealing with coyotes all day long. It has to be weird for you to look at this. This is about half of a coyote. Yeah. So when you when you get a crate motor from whatever supplier, mm -hmm. what do you need to do to it as a as an installer? I mean, is there any, do, do you just bolt it up and plug everything in and go? Is there are there any checks? you want to go through first um, mostly it depends on the company they're mostly good to go um, I do like to pressurize the oil system before I fire it up um, get the filter on get the oil in the car some of these manufacturers are shipping these engines with oil in them now so wow. they're they're getting pretty fancy but uh, I like to make sure that I pressurize the oil system um, that way we don't get a dry fire um, but other than that, they're mostly good to go. I do a simple nut and bolt check just to make sure everything's tight. You don't know if the engine was assembled on a Monday or a Friday. Um, if you're lucky, you got a Wednesday engine. <laughs> but mostly they're good to go. Um, again, simple nut and bolt check, pressurize oil system, plug everything up. Usually good to go. And this one I'll be getting a few things. Obviously, we have to install our dry sump system, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to mean replacing the uh, crank pulley with the proper pulley to um, run the belt-driven dry sump. And what else do we have to do? Do we have, are we going to have to replace the water pump on this? Uh, I, I'm not too sure yet. Yeah. I need to compare it with the old one. Yeah, uh, I think, need to get the belt drive all together yeah. to really see what we're dealing with. You can might. And one thing we're definitely going to have to do is. Um, our our actuator our um, throttle body here this is an ls3 throttle body mm -hmm. uh, uses a very very different um, throttle map than our ls6 throttle body so while we can't adapt to it we need to put a um, basically a little computer box in in between the two to, to flip the signal essentially yeah. and um, get things moving the right way and the other thing what we're going to have to do is get the reluctor wheel uh, straightened out because our ls6 with a 24 piece reluctor wheel, and uh, this comes with a 54 piece or 58 piece reluctor wheel. I want to say it's a 58. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I'm sure it's on here somewhere. You, if you're watching this, you know already. Anyway, to get the uh, the the crank and, and and cam timing sense correctly, you have two choices. You can pull that reluctor wheel off the crank, which requires removing the crank heating it, pulling the reluctor wheel off, getting the new one on, making sure you have it lined up right. Not undoable, yep. but I'm not real excited about taking the crank out of a brand new motor. So yeah. we're gonna use uh, this uh, Wingenfelter TRG002, which is a little digital converter box. It converts our 24 tooth signal, or our this 54 tooth signal to our 24 tooth computer. We're gonna run our old PCM. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell us about mounting something like this because this is obviously something that's going to want to be mounted in some place dry and hopefully vibration free and have clean power so what are, we, are we going to do anything special with this um we are going to run this with a key on power relay to to make sure we're not leaving any extra draws in the system um you can see we've got plenty of wire so we're going to find a nice dry spot uh, make sure we have a nice good clean ground um, nothing out of the ordinary for wiring just do it correctly and you won't have a problem awesome so that's that's where we are now so what it's uh today is wednesday so by monday we're back on the road right yep <laughs> i like your enthusiasm <laughs> I like my enthusiasm i'm wrong but uh yeah so the, th today begins a, a big adventure for our corvette hopefully by the first of 2020 We'll have this back on the road, get it tuned down at VMP, 
get everything working and have 530 plus horsepower on tap. That 530 horse is through exhaust manifolds and without E85 that we're going to continue to run. And uh, with the stock size crank pulley, we're going to be running a little bit of an underdrive crank pulley. So hopefully even, even more than that on the VMP dyno down there. Oh yeah, we've got yeah. the sauce. <laughs> We will see you guys next time. Uh, please like and subscribe and do all those fancy YouTube things. Thanks to uh, Jesse Spiker over here. He's going to be helping us out through this entire project. Thanks to Chris behind the camera. We'll see you again next time from the shops of Grassroots Motorsports Magazine.